2.6 billion. 31st March 2016, Bank of Ghana. Total bank capitalization 2.6 billion. Non-performing loans total 4.9 billion, excluding overdrafts. I, I'm not going to say anything about it. But I'm only giving you the information. By financial and institutional sustainability to ensure continuity and certainty of investment. I'm only an accountant, so I can tell you that if I deduct 4.9 from 2.6, I can show I 2.3. That I know. You put on it whatever spin you want. But we're talking about financial and institutional sustainability to ensure continuity and certainty of investment. And the ethics, forget it. We have failed. Totally failed. We have zero knowledge. I mean, what business do you have being a journalist if you don't read? I personally have bought this book for two journalists. And I haven't even bothered to read it. I personally have recommended it to all the journalists that I've come across. And quite a few come to my office because over time, I've developed relationships, lives of relationships. None of them have read it. What business do you have? What business do you have? No. As for your language, forget it. You don't even write in English. We have failed. We have failed. What language are you writing? Who are you speaking to? What does it mean, MBC 22? So what? What does it mean? We live in a country where monkey, the word baboon, the chop. We have less than 600,000 people spending 40, over 40% 40 of our income. What have you said? What have you done about it? We live in a country where the exchange rate doesn't make sense. What have you done about it? We have failed. We have failed because we don't have knowledge. We are failed because we are not truthful. We are failed because we don't have ethics. We fly down to earth. We are failed because we don't write in English that people understand. And my use of the, uh, the, the tin can, the image, the graphic in the presentation, is deliberate. That is communication at a very basic level. And somebody like Lloyd will definitely remember. Mr. Nani, uh, we were much younger. We used to play telephone. That's what we used to do. Unless my grandmother understands you, you have failed. And we have failed. We have failed because we don't have no knowledge. We have failed because we don't provide the truth. We don't speak the truth. We have failed because we have no ethics. We have failed because we don't write in a language that the people understand. You see, one of the things, for example, I do all the time is if I have um, the camera crew come to my office, when I finish the interview, I ask the cameraman whether they understood what I'm saying. And if they say no, then I've failed. Because good writing is writing a language that people can understand. And, and most of us journalists, most journalists do not write in plain, simple language. And they hide their ignorance uh, with jargons and with cliches. But that's not the way to communicate. Communication 101, the person you are talking to must understand. Unfortunately, because we lack knowledge, we are not communicating. And it's such a big disservice to the country where over 50% are living in absolute poverty. It's a big responsibility. That's why I'm passionate about it, because it's something that has to be addressed. It needs to be addressed very aggressively to the journalist. Write, acquire knowledge, the journalist should acquire knowledge. Write in a language that people understand, so that the people can make choices. That's the most important thing. It's about the people. It's not about the authorities. Because if we have, we know that if we have information that we understand, if we are able to make choices, then we will make sure that the authorities do the things that they have to do so that we prosper. And it's critical. That's my message. We've had challenges with the quality of reporting. People believe in 
just a one-off story, an event-based story. When you are talking about business and financial journalism, you need to talk about other issues that relate to um, the business and finance of the economy. And the awards has a number of categories. We have nine categories, but the, the ultimate is the 10th award, and that you must have uh, a story that is based on finance and another category. Every year we choose one sort of category that we would emphasize. For example, in the last edition we chose development. And development means that anything that has to do with infrastructure in the country, anything that has to do with our movement from one level to another level. And so the stories must capture that kind and something else. The year before we had agribusiness and finance. So every year our emphasis is on one subject area and that is what gives you the ultimate award. The ultimate award takes you to, to Washington for the World Bank Spring Meeting and it is important that that award is won by somebody who can represent the country, who can represent our thoughts and our ideas. So that is the thing that we always look up to. And we believe that at the end of the day, by the time that we get through with our awards, people will come to realize the essence of writing and writing well for business and finance.